Hello there, my name is Marcos Montenegro and welcome back to another Data in the Wild episode hosted by Data Meaning. Before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to the channel below and click the bell to turn on notifications to be the first to know every time we upload a new video. Let's talk about trade areas. With this tool, you're gonna be able to create a circle around a point you have. So you're gonna have a spatial object in this circle format around a point you have. How we do that? In the trade area configuration, the first thing you're gonna point here will be the column with the points you have to create these trade areas. So one option you have here is if you want to include this point in the output. So if you want to see the circle and the point in the middle, in the center, or if you just want to see the circle itself. The second thing you're gonna do here is to specify what is the radius of your circle. So here you're gonna type in the, the value you want to, to use as radius. So here below, you're gonna select the units you want to use for this value. So here I'm using miles, but you also have the, uh, the possibility to use kilometers. And also you have the possibility to use drive time units if you have a data set for it. Getting back to the miles units. In this case, so what I'm pointing here to Alteryx is to create a circle with five miles as radius to, to build this uh, circle. So once I run this workflow and render in the browser tool, you're gonna have a circle like that. So I'm pointing the, in the center and the circle around with the radius you type it in, in the, uh, the configuration. To return to this configuration screen, what other thing you can do here is instead of set a specific radius, you can set multiple radius to be made to create multiple circles, multiple trade areas, right? And how we do that? You can type in here something like 10 and then you press comma and the second radius you want to point. So like here, I, I type in 10 comma 5. So for this case, I'm telling to Alteryx create two trade areas, one with 10 miles uh, as radius and the second one with 5 miles. When we run and render again, you're gonna get two circles like that. So the bigger one with 10 miles and the, the lower one here with, with 5 miles. Getting back here to the configuration, just pay attention in one thing. Always you're gonna create multiple trade areas here always point from the uh, the bigger to the lower value okay otherwise what you're gonna get here at the final will be the bigger one uh, overlapping overwriting the lower one so uh, you always need to do it this way from the bigger to the lower all right and we have another way to build this area as well is the dog nuts so it will be a way to you select the maximum and the minimum values to you create your area. So don't will create a circle, a complete circle with the entire area will be just from this range you set. So if instead I use this comma, I use the minus. Now I'm setting to Alteryx to create an area from 10 miles to five miles. Once I run that and run it again, you're gonna get this area here where you don't have the area from the point to the five miles, but you have the area from the five miles to the 10 miles you set in the configuration. So this way you can create this dugnet area here. And other case you may can have is when you have multiple points and when you create the, the trade areas, they overlap themselves. So you're gonna have something like that and you don't want 
to, to have these overlaps. So in the, the 3D area too, you have this last option here to eliminate all the overlaps. When you check this box in run and render again, you're gonna get something like that, where all the objects continue to be uh, separated. So we have many individual objects here, but always when uh, some object encounters the other, some 3D area encounters other 3D area, a 3D area. Uh, what you're gonna have is things like these lines, just joining them, but keeping them as individuals. In this way, you can eliminate the overlaps if you don't want them. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please comment below. And don't forget to subscribe to know when future videos are posted. Thanks for watching!